Hey, this is Rodney with The Rod Shop, and in this video we're going to be talking about a 2013 Subaru Outback that doesn't seem to want to run. It'll run, but has low power or bogs or quits running, stalls out, let it cool off a little bit and it'll start back up, it surges on its own, all sorts of weird things. So what do you think that it could be? So this is the same Subaru I did another video about it, the transmission slipping, and it did have a slipping transmission. There's no doubt about that. After replacing, getting two replacements, finally getting one with a little bit lower miles and stuff, and it didn't slip, you could tell a world of difference. However, by the time we got the second transmission in it, it started bogging and dying, so it was harder to test the transmission to make sure it was working good because it wouldn't rev up past 4,500, five, five grand. So I couldn't tell what was going on with that. I had the Subaru at the shop that changed the transmission out, and they were curious about it, and they tried a MAF sensor, tried a different throttle body. Um, they pulled the O2 sensor, I think, and it might be a clog, but it didn't seem to help either. But there was a reason for that. I don't have a high-end computer. I mean, I've got the, a basic computer scanner that does ABS, it does a few things, but they have like a, you know, a five or $10,000 computer scanner, and they knew somebody that knew about Subarus and brought him in and he couldn't figure it out. So nobody could figure it out, so he brought the car back to the shop. I then had to try to figure out what it was, what the problem was. Now, uh, as far as we knew, the fuel pump had never been changed, and I did change the fuel pump out, and I, I did that in another video, and you can watch. It's not really a hard process to change the fuel pump out on 2013 Super Outback, but uh, that's for another video. So I just went back to basics. I put a vacuum gauge onto the manifold, on the intake manifold. Started up when I first started, it pulled 18 inches of vacuum, and then it started dropping, and the needle started shaking, and you could hear the engine not wanting to run right, and it engine made, just kind of made rattling noises and stuff. That's with the exhaust system hooked up. <clears throat> it's still clogged. <clears throat> Without it, it pulls around 18 inches of vacuum. And it hooked up, it doesn't, uh, it can't even pull that, and it's, it's been dropping as I've been letting it idle. It's going to run. So at that point, I dropped the exhaust system from the header pipe on the 2013 Subaru Outback, the catalytic converter, and the header pipes are all made as a unit, which is. I guess it's space saving, but it's also kind of stupid. So you're basically your uh, updraft and downdraft, O2 ports and stuff. That's all in there. And like I said, the shop I had to pull the uh, the O2 sensor out, thinking that might have helped. But the problem was extensive. So I dropped that exhaust system, and it still was clogged. So we went ahead and ordered a new catalytic converter header pipe assembly. It was about 140 bucks. I'll put a link down in the description for one. Uh, they're pretty easy to change out. So I changed it out, went in and put new O2 sensors in it and put it up there, but I left the exhaust system disconnected to it. I started it, and you'll see here in the video, I started it, it revved up like a race car. It revved up fantastic. Didn't try to, try to drive it because they want to burn anything up just yet. So when I hooked up the exhaust system, uh, it went back to bogging and everything. This car has two catalytic converters. It's got the, of the one that's made to the header pipes, and it's got a secondary, it looks like a resonator, and that's what I thought it was, but it's actually a secondary catalytic converter. So we cut that out and just put in a flex pipe, and the thing shifted perfect, ran like a million dollars. It has a lot of power too, I practically burn the wheels now. It has more power than it ever has before, and it gets a lot but get a better gas mileage. I was looking up for the best place to hook up my vacuum gauge to that was easy to get to and there's probably some down below there's not that many vacuum lines on this car that are exposed or easily to get to so you've got the one right here that runs onto the, the brake booster so it's real simple not that hard Let's pull the clamp back pull it up now we're just going to put an adapter on it Using a vacuum tee that's I think 3 8 and it comes down to a little 5 16 uh, fitting. I put a cap on it. 
I just took my hose and there and all I gotta do is hook my vacuum gauge to this line right here and then we can test the vacuum on it Of course you saw the gauge reading and typically if the exhaust is clogged when you first start it you'll have a decent vacuum but the, either the longer it runs or the more you accelerate it'll steadily drop that's telling you that it's not being able to get rid of the exhaust so it very well also can't pull in the vacuum it needs to so this looks like a strong indication that the exhaust system is clogged and unfortunately the way this uh, Subaru is made the pipes that come off the exhaust manifolds is the catalytic converter so you can't really pull anything loose to see if it's going to help it okay in order to remove this <clears throat> catalytic converter you don't want your wires getting yanked or pulled you may have to as if you get your hands in there i was able to get two hands up there and disconnect the disconnector of that one and then i had to come through the frame <clears throat> the other connector is up there with it. You kind of have to run your hand around the frame on this side and this opening here to come up through there with one hand and to come through this hole with the other and just connect it. And if it's easier, you can drop it down, just drop it down carefully and don't yank the wires apart. There's three bolts to the exhaust pipe to the head right here. Same over here on this side. Now this is only on 2.5. This pipe only works on 2.5, not the V6. But um, disconnected the pipe over here, put all three bolts. There's three, three nuts on this side and three nuts on this side. And then there's three nuts right here for the pipe that runs down the body or down underneath the car. And of course, this one, the stud came out with instead of the nut, but that's fine. Um, now all I gotta do is just wiggle this thing loose and set it down. And that's it pulled out. It just goes straight up to the motor. You might want to pull the it's, it's up to you. You can you can pull that plastic cover underneath the the uh, engine compartment. I didn't. I got around and got the these connectors disconnected. You gotta this one, you got two O2 sensors. I think this is bank one and that's bank two. It's a before and after. The one, and I'll put down in the description, the one to replace it with. It comes with, uh, I think, extra studs and um, gaskets and stuff. But when I pick this thing up, it's got a, uh, in this section here, it's like got a baffle loose and it slides back and forth. You can hear it plain as day. It's in pretty bad shape. Okay, I didn't get to video this because we were gonna try to throw this shielding onto the new pipe before it rained. I was in a hurry and didn't get to, to uh, change it and then of course then it rained, so that didn't, it was a waste of time anyhow. But when you get your new uh, header, catalytic converter manifold for your Subaru it's going to pretty much look like this but you're going to say well that don't look anything like I have because what you have is going to look like this with all this shielding on it. I will tell you that this shielding is not that hard to swap over but I also will tell you that it's it's six of one half a dozen of another. Most people will just put the manifold on just like that and not worry about all that shielding and that it'll work the only reason why I would, there's, I've got a few reasons why I use this shielding. One, with all this shielding, it keeps the, the little bit of the tinging noise down 
that the exhaust pipes will give you. Like if you've ever had headers on an old Chevrolet car or whatever, you, got, you get this little bit of a metal ting as the exhaust comes out of it. So this kind of deadens the sound. The other thing is, the shielding protects the heat off of the, all the components in the engine. So it does do that. Plus, the other thing is, when you've got bare pipes like that and you're going down the road and you hit a puddle of water, those pipes are, you know, thousand degrees. I mean, they're hot, hot as everything. So then when water hits it and it cools it, it tries to warp that. Of course, it's all bolted in place, but the, the expansion and, con and contraction of being heated and instantly cooled and stuff could cause it to crack, uh, cause it to come apart. So if you're planning on keeping the car, you know, for another 100,000 miles, you might not want to, uh, you might want to put the shielding back on it. The process was this. This midsection, even though these two pieces look separate, this, this lighter gray and this is made together, but this midsection has to come off first. It's just bolts that run around it. That's all it is, Nut, nuts and bolts. There's nuts on the back side of these bolts here. Take them loose and then this piece here lips under this and you can see this piece here or this assembly because you got this is two pieces this is two pieces and this is two and actually this is four pieces you got well let's see yeah you got this these two pieces are made together and then this piece is made together i had to replace some bolts uh due to they either broke or they just weren't long enough to get it started again Inside this shielding has this uh, carbon fiber, or maybe not carbon fiber, but like a ceramic type wool that uh, they don't use asbestos anymore. That just kind of helps keep this thing from quiet, from tinging, from uh, dinging and stuff and hit bumps. But changing the shielding out, all we do is take it apart, set it aside, and the pieces is where they went, and then just reassembled it over top of the, the pipe. It took about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, to do all that. I did replace the O2 sensors. I have a socket for that. This is an O2 sensor socket. You can see it's got a split in it, that's so that you can run that over the wire. I think they make a few different sizes now. This is the most common size, but uh, for with the position these are in, you can probably just get a wrench on them once it's out. They're harder to change once they're in the car. But while it was out, we just want to put new O2 sensors in it. Don't worry on the Subaru, the, these plugs you have to do, the only thing you have to keep in mind is I'm changing the O2 sensors on this exhaust system. Make note of the connector, because a factory one is gray and one is black. The rear one is black and the front one is gray, but the replacement sensors, they're both gray, so that doesn't help you. But the plug connector, they're different. This this connector will not plug into the black connector on that's all still on the car. It's got different slots. It's got a two slot, whatever you want to just call it a two slot and a one slot. The one that goes on the rear, better lighting here. It has two two slots, as you can see, one on the top and one on the side. But you do have to make note of which one was which. So just remember, pay attention to, just in case it's been changed before and the, the connectors aren't the same color, just pay attention to what connector this is on the in and the one that goes on the out, outer bank. Now I was talking about when these pipes get hot and then they get water and they get cold and they contract stuff, it does warp after time. And when you go to take it off, the mounting holes right here that go to the actual heads, their studs stick down. You kind of get stuck on the studs trying to pull it off. And you usually have to just get a screwdriver between the head and the manifold and kind of just lightly pull down the screwdriver as you wiggle and then work it down the threads. Which means it may, be, it may be hard to get it back on. So to make sure that you don't have to deal with all that, and I've seen one video where some guy's trying to expand, compress this and expand and all that, so there's no sense in all that. All you gotta do, you don't have to do it on one side, because you can see it's a little shiny in here. Let's see that. What I did is I just took a file and a rasp 
and just kind of egg those holes out a little bit. And I've already tried it sticking it up there to see if it fits, and it fits perfect. But just egg out one side a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot, just, just a little bit. And that'll allow it to, to slide on and off a lot easier. It's not going to hurt anything on the ceiling or anything like that. Just egg your holes out just a little bit. I started off with a drill bit. I just took a drill and just kind of walked it back and forth until I egged out the hole a little bit. And I took a little file and a rasp and just went around it and kind of rounded them out a little bit. And that's all you have to do. But that helps make it fit. You don't have to do it on both sides. Just do it on one. It doesn't take a lot. And it slid right up there perfectly. Now for the new exhaust manifold, uh, catalytic converter setup, then I'm going to put down the link. It comes with the, all the gaskets you need and it comes with new studs that goes out to the uh, rest of the exhaust system. Now these are the new studs that go in that piece right there. That's, the, that's your output that goes to the rest of the exhaust system. And these are the studs. Now, you can probably just screw them in by finger I and mean, then you get a little uh, crescent wrench or a little wrench to fit it because these are square, you can see. But um, if you use a pipe plug socket, and I'll put a link down in the description for these tools as well, you can uh, just turn them with that. It looks, see it's square, almost like your 3 8 uh, drive side, but it's just a square. They make them for different sizes. These are probably metric, but I uh, found that this size here will fit it good enough because it's not like you're going to be super torquing or anything. You're just going to run up there till they're snug. Now your set comes with gaskets or you can buy gaskets and you may have noticed that one side seems to have this um, flat flange looking on one side and the other side seems to be just kind of meshed in or, or more narrow to this. The way it was when I took it off and it's the way I normally do when I do uh, most exhaust manifold gaskets is the, the wider flange I'll put to the actual engine side and then the smaller one I'll put to the exhaust pipe side or the header side whatever you want to call it but that's how I'll put these on. I just run a little wire brush over it. Um, you can put one on a die grinder and a drill. I think I just, I just use one in the small little drill. I don't want to do any high speed because it's aluminum heads. And as long as, you, it, as long as you don't go real hard on it, you just want to clean off the, the, the carbon and the, the black stuff and the dirt just so that you get a good matte finish on your new gasket. That's all you have to do. Just to make life easier, I just kind of set this thing at an angle. Then I went ahead and hooked up my uh, O2 sensor wires. That way, Makes, it makes it a lot easier. Of course, once it's up in there, you're going to have to make sure your O2 sensor wires, since especially the replacement wires are longer than the originals, make sure they don't get you know bound or touching the exhaust system. So we'll have to probably pin them up or tie them up or something, but we'll worry about that later. Now we're going to lift this thing up. I am not going to be able to hold the camera and get into position and show you how to put this thing on. Like I said, I've just shown you just how to get the... You may not have this problem. As you can see, one of the studs came out. The nuts stuck on the stud, which I'm just going to put in like a bolt. But um, however you need to get this thing to hang just to where they just kind of sit there. Uh, if you run into too many problems where the thing keeps dropping, you know, coming out while you're trying to put it up, then like I said, you can put, uh, you can probably put a little piece of tape on the thread, you know, where you can pull it loose once you're done. Or, um, put a dab of silicone sealer, just something, or even a little Vaseline, just something on the top, so just to kind of get it to stick in place. You don't want to put a lot, you don't want it to catch fire or, or smolder or anything, but just, just something small just to kind of keep holding it in place for you. Okay, now we're gonna start it up, see what the vacuum is, and I'll have the exhaust system hooked up to the catalytic converter because I have a suspicion it's clogged too, but we're gonna check the vacuum uh, with the with the open and see if it does better than it did.
That's with the exhaust system hooked up. <clears throat> it's still clogged. <clears throat> Without it, it pulls around 18 inches of vacuum. And it hooked up. It doesn't, uh, it can't even pull that. And it's, it's been dropping as I've been letting it idle. It won't even run. Now, as you can see, after I hooked up the exhaust system to the converter, it was clogged again. It wouldn't, hard, it wouldn't run and went right back to the way it was. And this thing has a secondary catalytic converter in it. It looks like a resonator, which a lot of cars just have a catalytic converter than a resonator. The Subaru felt the need of putting two catalytic converters. I pulled this pipe off, turned it up, and honeycomb grid came out and a uh, a pile of dust, just huge pile of dust came out of it. So I cut that catalytic converter out and put a flex pipe in because the, the angle it's at, it's hard to tell in this picture here, but the angle it's at, it would require a flex pipe. And so put that in, hooked it up, and then you can see what the results are after that. Okay, you have a big canister right there, you know, big, big looks like a muffler normally, and that would be the lower rear catalytic converter and I'll put links down in the description to buy that or in my opinion it'd be probably be cheaper to go to a muffler shop and they could probably put you in for one you know a universal one for maybe a hundred and fifty something like that you'd have to just call around and check but legally they cannot cut a catalytic converter out of a car so we did now just removed it and put in a, a, a $30 pipe right there, flex pipe, so that, because it makes a kind of a curve to fit correctly. It's not that hard. There's a hanger right there. It's two bolts that are nut and bolt combination on the springs there. That's kind of your flex uh, piece right there where the engine torques. And then it's just three bolts up there at the uh, manifold. You can just drop that pipe and then pull it out and just cut it and put that piece in. Just put some uh, exhaust clamps on it. Clear exhaust, lots of vacuum. Steady needle. The aftermarket uh, header pipe uh, catalytic converter did not come with the heat shielding on it, so I took it off the old one and transferred it just, just for sound and protection. You don't have to have it, but I, I, did, I wanted to put it on there anyways. Put two, two brand new O2 sensors in it, and then like I said, put a flex pipe in place of the secondary catalytic converter. Because when I turned that thing up, and I could hear things rattling when I dumped it, I got this big huge piece of honeycomb laying on the ground and, and a pile of just, just dust coming out. That was uh, huge. Luckily it did not go into the muffler. Muffler's fine, and, and oddly enough, even without a resonator or a, uh, uh, the secondary, uh, catalytic converter the thing's not loud at all it it has just a little bit of a rack if you rev it up really hard it'll kind of pop 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 a little bit in the back but overall it worked out great of course you can go get a you can go get a resonator put in there if you want to or a secondary catalytic converter you can go to any muffler shop and get one put in actually i think they do sell that section and i'll put that link down in the description too so i hope you found this information and this video helpful if you did be sure to like and subscribe and uh, always check back because i'm always working on something crazy and i always have crazy information just from weird things. See you in the next one.